Hi, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're refitting the bumper and the bonnet to the Cougar, um, which doesn't go according to plan really, let's be honest. Never mind, you get to come and laugh at me making mistakes again. Um, this is, uh, you know, a big learning curve for me because this is the first time I've done a salvage recovery. So we'll let you uh, have a look. It, let's say it's not bad, it's not horrendous, it's just a bit of a Bit of a learning curve this time. Again, more of hey ho. Anyway, enjoy. So, now the bumper is broadly in place, we've got two screws to put in the bumper bracket there, one down there to hold the wheel arch liner in, then we've plugged in the back of the fog lights, um, that side we have a slight problem in so far as the fact I haven't ordered the headlight for that yet, I forgot to do that. This side I've just popped the headlight in, it just basically clips in with two clips at the bottom and then there's a bolt at the top. And then underneath here, there's this strange eyebrow thing that clips in there. And then an inner eyebrow thing that pops in there. Again, the cost of these silly little bits of plastic from, from Ford & Co, is, it amazes me. That's 30 quid, That's, that piece there is 20 quid. It's bonkers really, but never mind have to have them otherwise you end up with a big hole in your car which is not great um, then next step for the bumper to finish that off will be to finish polishing it back because it's had a an initial cut but it needs uh, a second cut now it's in place and a polish with the rest of the car um, I've also got bits around the car like this where I've touched up um, some scratches I'll just need to, to knock those back. Give the whole thing a clay bar, so in a moment, you guys who love a washed car are in for a treat, because although I gave it a very quick wash to just check for any scratches like that, um, it needs a proper wash, clay bar, cut and polish. Um, and then I'm also going to detail the engine, and I've got the bonnet sprayed up in the back garden, so I just need to pop that on as well. Again, that's had an initial sand back, but then when it's on, it needs a full cut and polish as well. So that is the next set of jobs on there. So, so before I uh, put the bonnet on, I thought I'll use the advantage of access without banging my head or risking banging my head. So I've just been going through this with a spray of, sort of just a general degreaser, just yeah, just trying to tidy things up a bit. And then I've got a detail brush, which I just work into the various bits of plastic. So I use my detail brush and I'll get into all of these bits that are a bit awkward to get to. Um, any sort of big areas like this, I will, I'm afraid, cheat and rinse down. But only the outside of the scuttle panel, there's been no hose pipe going on inside the engine at all. So just trying to get into all of these little grubby bits and bobs. And then we'll get the steam out on it. But hopefully this will do its thing and break down all of the, the greasy mank on the engine and then we'll be a bit cleaner. So another place that's important to get to is all these plastic little bits around pipes and whatnot that's all you know, usually ends up caked in ick. So um, I have still got to service it, but so it's not getting the, the full nine yards, but it's, uh, it's getting a good go and over while I've got plenty of access. So we'll see how it looks in a bit. As you can see, 
with the steam mask going, you can get into degrease any of these uh, bits and bobs that you struggle to get at. All the pipes down here. Um, and then the other thing I like to do with, with the steamer is you get in with a finer sort of detail brush into all of these bits of plastic and all these looks and looks and, looks and crannies just to make the whole thing look a little bit more more loved in loved up rather than looked after um, and then finally I'm just going to go over with some um, bumper back to black stuff just to tidy the rest of that up um, and that'll do until it gets the final version before we sell it which hopefully then will be a whole load easier but as you can see it's already looking lots lots cleaner there we go hopefully you'll agree that's starting to look relatively clean for a hundred thousand mile diesel engine so we'll um, move on and we'll go and get the bumpers uh, the bonnet sorted out rather not the bumper the bumpers already here um, we're going to get the bonnet sorted out so here's the underside of my freshly painted bonnet um, the other side doesn't look quite so good at the moment because it's had um, a going over with 1000, 2000, 3000 grit sandpaper at the moment um, ready for polishing when it gets on the car or first cut so we've got the sound deadening off the old bonnet um, and that goes on there and he's held on with lots of these little pressing clips but before we do that I have a can of lovely wax oil here and we're going to get that in under all of these bits and give it a good old squirt under all those bits to stop it rusting from the inside out so that's the next job they have put in holes like this specifically for that as well so we'll do a good dose of that get the, the sand deadening on and then get the bonnet on the car I'll see you when the bonnet is on the car well I've put the bonnet on and we have it sort of lined up it seems to line up perfectly down here um, unfortunately it's a bit low here and it is as tight as you like up here and I'm struggling to resolve that um, to the point where I've just opened it managed to bend it here which has really pissed me off frankly but never mind these things are sent to try us I did warn you it looked pretty ropey from some uh, from some sanding that needs cleaning off and polishing up but I shan't bother doing that now until I've fixed this particular bloody problem anyway hey ho live and learn I'm guessing it might be just a new set of bonnet hinges but we shall find out I'm a bit hacked off about this, but never mind. As I say, it all seems to line up you know, a little bit in here, match the tightness up there, but it generally sort of lines up okay, which is really frustrating. So, as I say, it obviously needs a little bit of jiggling, but I just can't get it even in the right ballpark. So, oh well, it is at least starting to look like a car again. So that's something, I guess. Never mind. So there you go. Another disaster on the learning experience of fixing this Cougar. Um, I'm reasonably happy with how the front bumpers come together, but um, as I say, a bit hacked off about the old bonnet. Never mind. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Um, don't forget to subscribe, share, tell me I'm useless in the comments, etc and we'll see you at the next time when hopefully i can get this finished at the very least i want to get the rest of it polished up and that, get that job jobbed soon so we get the interior done we are getting there it's just a bit frustrating hey ho so we've got some shiny new hinge brackets in there which we put on with a bit of jiggery pokery to get at them you have to undo all of the clips down here pop the trim off this um, a pillar piece here and undo that that then gives you space to pull back the plastic wing sufficient to get in those nuts um, sorry those bolts and get them adjusted then it's just a case of putting it back on so 
and on this side much the same um, I've bent the bent bit of bonnet back so we'll just have to touch that up and I'll touch up the rest of the bonnet at the same time but we're there or thereabouts so um, there is this that lives up the uh, up the wing as well and there's another one on the other side behind the um, washer bottle which is a bit of a pain but never mind so there we go that's got the bonnet on now just to pop the headlights in and then we can put the bonnet down and we are there on the front pretty much apart from the grill well we've got most of the front end back together again which is great um, went to move it off the drive started it up and it's come up with a transmission system fault which is annoying but plugging it in it's basically because there's insufficient transmission fluid um, it was on my list to change it anyway I was just hoping not to have to do it today so today we'll be doing the service on the Cougar after all